You're late once again, Dimitri. Natalie, please, not right now. I'm very exhausted from work today. Please, can we talk about this tomorrow? No. This will not wait until tomorrow. I have let you tell me that too many times already. In the morning, you leave before I wake up, and you return from work late at night tired and ready for bed. Well, yes, but I start woe. You start work early. I know. This is the same excuse you've been giving me ever since you started working for that horrid company. I'm sick and tired of always hearing the same excuse, always being placed as second best compared to your job. Natalie, lower your voice please, it's quite late, and we don't want to wake the neighbors. I don't care. Let them wake up in the middle of the night, and hear our discussion. They should know what type of man you are. Neglectful and unreasonable. Natalie. Please, calm down. Let's resolve this quietly and without any added drama. We don't want to cause a scene. Drama. A scene. You think I'm being dramatic? Is that it, Dimitri? No, of course. Then what am I being, Dimitri? Please, let's not start an arg. What am I being, Dimitri? Unreasonable. Unreasonable? I'll show you unreasonable. You. You worthless, good-for-nothing human being. Natalie, please calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. I'm done with this. Done with this whole ordeal. Done with you in this dead relationship, Dimitri. I have had enough. I cannot stand to be with you any longer. Nata. No, Dimitri. I've hit it. Please, just... Just leave this place. I don't want you here with me. Natalie, don't do this. You're not second best to my work, I love you. You're my priority in life. Everything I'm doing is all for you. Isn't that enough for you? I've given you this beautiful apartment, expensive clothing, and jewelry. Doesn't that prove my love for you? No, it's never enough for me. I want you by my side. I want to go out with my friends, and show off my boyfriend. I want them to see how happy I am. How well off I am, because I knew what I wanted in life. But this isn't enough Dimitri. I cannot do this any longer. Just leave. Natalie please. Leave Dimitri. Just leave. Get out, I want nothing to do with you, until you get your priorities straight. I'm truly sorry Natalie. But I do love you, if that means anything to you. Now what? I need to get out of here. I cannot think straight with all this noise of the city, that is it. I will do what dad always did whenever he was stressed. Go into the forest and find myself. Yes, that's what I'll do. These past few months have been so peaceful compared to my life in the city. Why was my life not like this in the city? What was I doing wrong that I was so miserable there? Could it have been because of my job that I was miserable? I do not even understand why I submerged myself in my work. I never wanted the job, so why did I continue to work under that company? Why, Natalie? It was all for Natalie. Since I had met her, she had been interested in me because of my popularity and then later my wealth, no, of course not. It was never Natalie's fault there has to be something else. She was the best thing to have ever happened to me in life, of course. Why did I not see it any sooner? She was just using me. She never loved me. There may have been a point in time when she did love me, but she was in love with my money, not me as a person. All I was to her was a walking bag of money, a fool who would give her anything her heart desired. Oh, what a fool I was. To Natalie I never existed, I was not Dimitri, I was just her walking piggy bank. Natalie. Oh. Natalie, you were so concerned with material wealth you never saw who I was as a person. But I cannot fault you, I was the same. I threw myself into my work to earn more money, to add on to my already large wealth just so that I could please you and meet your every need, but, did you ever care about that? No, you hated that I was spending more time at work, so I could earn money for you and not myself. 
You wanted me to have a great wealth while at the same time, you wanted me to give you my undivided attention, dear Lord, you were so much a child Natalie. Just like a child you wanted for me to provide the world to you, but you could never understand that I needed to work for it. Instead, you wanted my life to revolve around you, well, you did have me wrapped around your little finger. I will be honest with myself, I was hooked. But, was I that enamored with you that I failed to see your glaring faults? Your arrogance and greed, you just wanted a trophy to parade around, to show off to your friends. I was just a means for you to be seen as a better person, a means to one-up the rest of your friends. Through me you sought to gain a sense of accomplishment, you never bothered to know anything about me. You never attempted to understand me as a person, or understand my actions, and why I did the things I did. In all honesty, all you bothered yourself with was finding ways to make yourself look better than others. You just cared about gaining a higher position in life, through me, I was such a fool, to even think you were a sweet and caring woman. To even think I thought of creating a life with you in the future. Such an idiot, I never needed all that wealth I tried to accumulate and kept building up. I had no use for it, I was happy living a simple life, but then you came into the picture, I wanted to give you everything. I lusted for your love and affection, while you desired my wealth and a better position in life, we never really even knew each other. We only knew each other's names and the basics. I never learned about your family. I knew all of your likes and dislikes, but you never knew mine. Why, you only knew my name and where I worked, and how much money I made, because of that materialism that you had. We never had a meaningful relationship. It was not like others. No, ours was built on lies and self-interests. We both saw each other as a means to an end, you kept me from being lonely, and I gave you all the material things your little heart desired. Had we never had this fight, I would still be leading a miserable life next to you. I would have continued, working for the company, giving you everything you wanted, while I slowly deteriorated, never once realizing that I lived a meaningless life, devoid of true friendship and companionship, I would have died realizing that my life was devoid of any meaning. Realizing that I never had any real connections with other people, and realizing what kind of person you were Natalie. A conniving, gold digger who only cared for herself and only wanted my money. That would have been such a fearful thing to have realized before I died. To know that my life had no meaning other than trying to achieve something I myself did not even know I wanted, I am glad we had that argument and that I came here. I have finally seen how pointless my previous life was. I was just moving without a destination in mind. I was like any machine, with no mind, but a preset fate. By coming here I have realized that the society I lived in was corrupted because of its own materialism. Everyone only desired to get ahead in life, and they did not care who they used to get where they wanted. They never bothered to stop and think of where they were going, what they were doing, or reflect on the people that were present in their life. Nature has opened my eyes to all of the mistakes I have made in my life. It has shown me what I have done wrong, and has allowed me to see the truth of this corrupted, materialistic world. I am happier now than I have ever been in my entire lifetime when I lived in the city.